Welcome to 755 Forever, the new and rebranded version of the former 755 is real. I am David O'Brien, still your Braves beat writer at The Athletic, and I'm with my co-host, as usual, former Braves reliever Eric O'Flaherty. What's going on, Eric? What's up, Dave? It's good to see you. Good to see you, man. I'm looking forward to this. You guys are going to love it. If you liked the show before, you're going to love it now. We're going to be doing the same thing. For now, our plan is to do it after every series. And if there are other times that we need to do one, we can step in and do that. And we might increase the rate at some point. But for now, it's going to be after every series, which will end up being as many as we did before, at least two a week. So it should give us uh, ample opportunity to talk about everything that's going on with the Braves. And it should be cool. We're doing this with... uh, Tim Shovers, your guys are in good hands. This is our, our new producer. Longtime Braves fan. Grew up in the area in Atlanta. The Braves won every year when he was a kid. You're going to like the things that we do with this. We're going to have some merchandise. We're going to have some hats and T-shirts, the kind of stuff that we wanted to get before but weren't permitted to. And that's going to happen. So it should be pretty cool. I'm ready. You know, this last few weeks, I've like... There's been times where I've gone, God, I wish we had the podcast to talk about what's going on because this has been a frenetic offseason for the Braves. It's underscored what makes Alex Anthopoulos, I mean, in my opinion, and I'm not just saying this because I work with the guy or work have to work with the guy and talk to him and everything. He honestly, I think, is the best general manager, president of baseball operations in the game today. Because of how creative he is and because of the relationship he has with the manager and the coaching staff and the players, And he just does things the right way. And I had a former player tell me the other day that he's the most transparent general manager he's ever been under. And if he he tells you what you want to hear when you want to hear it, and he tells you what you don't want to hear sometimes, but that's the truth. And I think he operates like that with Brian Snicker all the time too. And in his dealings with other teams. And uh, we've seen it. We've seen example after example this this offseason of why this guy is kind of set apart from some other general managers who just try to throw money at a problem and really just try to do things the way they've always been done. This guy looks at things differently. He never really breaks stride. You know, I mean, he stays with what he does and stays into character all the time. You you don't see those kind of desperate emotional moves late in the season or too early in the off season. And you kind of never see what he's about to do coming. It's creative. My favorite thing about him is just that he's a really smart GM, but he also buys into culture. The culture that they've built has been the number one. And then when you bring up transparency with players, that goes with it too, because that's something players value more than anything from a manager, from a GM. Just tell me like it is, you know, tell me what to expect. And, and I think that's why time after time guys come to Atlanta and outperform their previous career. So they bring in two guys this offseason, the two guys they're pinning a lot of hopes on. Jared Kelnick, who you're for real familiar with, being out in Washington with the Seattle Mariners. This is a consensus top five prospect in the game a few years ago. A guy that can do everything. A five-tool guy or very close. They bring him in in a trade, the first of many that involved in the machinations of getting this guy and five years of control of Jared Kelnick to take over in left field after declining the option on Eddie Rosario, and I think the easiest thing to do would have been to pick up the $9 million option on Rosario. Fans love him and all that kind of thing. But the way Alex looks at it, here's another thing. Alex is always looking years down the line. So he knew if they pick up the option on Eddie Rosario, that was just an average hitter last year, OPS-wise, OPS-plus-wise. Instead, they bring in a guy, Kelnick, who had a better OPS-plus than Rosario last year, who has so much more upside, who's like seven years younger and has five years of contractual control. They bring him in. He also doesn't want to get caught with his pants down. He wants to have options. So Grissom, who was blocked in the infield, they had him play an outfield in Puerto Rico, and he was going to be one of the guys competing for either platoon spot or for left field job. But when they traded for Kelnick after the winter meetings, or during the winter meetings, that changes that. So that makes Grissom all of a sudden expendable. The other one is the big trade they made just a couple of weeks ago. To bring in Chris Sale, another guy who, if he listened to the fans, the easiest thing would have been, and to us in the media, to go out and get one of the top pitching free agents that was available. They were all so overpriced. If you look at the prices that these guys got, and the Braves were already up against the collective bargaining tax, the luxury tax, they could have gone out and signed a guy like uh, Lucas Giolito, who got almost $20 million a year from the Sox. Instead, the Braves go out and trade for Chris Sale, 
seven-time former All-Star, a guy who finished six straight top five finishes in the Cy Young. This was one of the handful of elite pitchers in baseball a few years ago before a spate of injuries, starting with Tommy John, and then some other freakish kind of things. Fell off a bicycle, fractured his wrist, things like that. They looked at his underlying numbers last year, and he had 20 starts last year, and the last 15 of those were outstanding. And add him to a rotation that has Max Freed entering the final year of his contract, Spencer Strider, Charlie Morton, whose option they picked up, 40 years old. All of a sudden, you got Bryce Elder, who was an all-star last year, faded badly down the stretch, but all of a sudden, you're not counting on him. And you got like four other guys that are competing for it. You're going to have some guys competing for that fifth spot. But the thing is, bringing in Chris Sale and everybody he talked to, including former teammates, said this is one of the most competitive, best teammates they've ever had. Never mind that he cut up an alternate jersey with the White Sox because he didn't want to pitch in it. Never mind that he uh, broke a TV on a rehab assignment. Everybody that plays with him said this guy is a great teammate and he's going to be a great influence on the younger pitchers and all the pitchers with his work ethic. Yeah, I, I didn't worry about his personality at all when I saw the move. The thing I like about it is you got another guy now that when he's on, he's not getting touched. You can throw him against any lineup, and that's what you need in the playoffs. You know, Elder could have been locked in in that start in Philly, and I still felt okay about it. You know, like this could get ugly quick. If you have a guy like Sale locked in and he's got his A game that day, he's beating anybody. And so now you got three or four guys, you know, even Charlie when he's locked in still has that, but Freed, Strider, Sale – if you get two or three of them locked in, just two out of three, you're winning two of those games. And I felt like that was the big difference last year in the postseason was, you know, you get an okay start out of one guy and then you throw Elder start, gives up a bomb to Harper, and it's like now we're behind the eight ball. When you have guys like that, I mean, I think everybody agreed that's kind of what was missing last year. A whole lot more of this to come, and we just wanted to give you guys kind of a tease of what we're going to be doing. It is 7.55 forever now. I'm David O'Brien with Braves Rider with The Athletic, and... Back with Eric O'Flaherty, former Braves reliever, part of Oventbril. And we're really excited to be coming back to you guys. And sorry that we missed a couple of months, but glad we're back on our feet and up and running again. And, and we'll be out there pretty soon. Thanks, everybody.